My daughter Lauren is in Poland right now, so I can surely tell a story about her without any repercussions. As long as she doesn't watch it on our app or on the internet, uh, I might get away with this. It was a Friday morning in November seven years ago when she was nine years old, and I was getting ready to take Lauren and Carson to school. Lauren walked past me and placed a, a homemade card in my hand and said, Daddy, this is for you. And on the front, which was beautifully decorated with autumn leaves, it said, thanks for all you do. And on the inside, she wrote this, dear dad, thank you for taking me to music every Thursday. And thank you for taking me to plays I've been in. Thank you for cheering me up when I'm sad. Your daughter, Lauren. She'd made this card at school, and for whatever reason, she chose to address it to me. And I felt deeply, deeply honored. In fact, you know, I'd been feeling kind of grumpy and negative for a lot of that week. That surprises some of you, doesn't it? But her simple words of appreciation cut through all of that and touched me deeply. My brothers and sisters, money cannot buy the joy that a word of thankfulness can generate within you. No medicine can produce the pleasure or the delight that a simple gesture of gratitude can create within your soul. In the book of Proverbs, there's a verse that I've always loved, Proverbs 25, 11, which says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. The contemporary English version expresses that same verse in this way. The right word at the right time is like precious gold set in silver. Isn't that wonderful? And isn't it so true? Deborah Norville, many of you may know as a television news and entertainment reporter, she published a book just a few years back about the power of gratitude titled, Thank You Power, Making the Science of Gratitude Work for You. In this book, she points out that not only is it a good thing to hear or receive gratitude from others, she says it is scientifically proven that giving and expressing thankfulness has a profound effect upon one's health and well-being. She writes, What if, instead of wallowing in our misery, we all chose to focus on being valued by a dear friend, for example? Or the memory of a colleague's face when she receives a surprise birthday cake at work. Or the smooth ride we've had to work this past week. As science is now proving, feeling grateful can actually make us healthier, literally. Practicing gratitude, acknowledging the blessings in our lives, and she is a Christian, by the way, and making it a point to recognize the good things can change us positively. Making it a point to recognize the good things can change us positively. You see, Norville says there's something powerful about a regular gratitude check. And she further cites a study from the University of California, Davis, that indicated this. People who were consciously grateful felt better about their lives. They were more optimistic, were more energetic, were more enthusiastic, were more determined, were more interested, were more joyful, they exercised more, they had fewer illnesses, they got more sleep, and they were more likely to have helped someone else. Now, I find that rather amazing, the power that gratitude can have upon your life, upon your well-being. Let me ask you, can you find something for which you can give thanks today? Is there someone to whom you need to express your gratitude? Is there anybody in your life who really needs to hear your gratitude and your thankfulness expressed toward them? Trust me, it can make a world of difference, not simply for the person who receives it, but also for you as the giver as well. Now, it's important as we gather on this Thanksgiving Sunday that we should remember not only should our gratitude be expressed horizontally to others, but there's also a vertical component as well, for we as people of faith 
should properly give lavish thanks and praise to God. To the God who made us, the God who, who sustains us and provides for us and blesses us in countless ways. This Thanksgiving season is in fact a time in which we intentionally express our gratitude to God for all of our blessings. We pause at this time of year and simply say, thank you to God. And that is for God's benefit as well as our own. Many of the Psalms have been written for that express purpose, to thank God for His blessings and to praise God for simply being who God is. Psalm 103 is one excellent example. The psalmist begins with those classic words, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all of God's benefits. The Hebrew word for bless is barach, and its original meaning suggests bowing down on one's knees in homage to one's sovereign, to a king. One commentary offers this observation. The psalmist, in effect, invites his or her whole self to bless God and God's name, which is suggestive of God's essence or character. The psalmist owes his or her whole life to God. In other words, the opening words of Psalm 103 are essentially saying, I'm going to bless God with all that I am. I'm going to bow down on my knees and thank God for who He is and for everything God has done and continues to do for me. Now, as we read through Psalm 103, the psalmist finds many reasons to give thanks to God. And I'll just bet that today you and I can give thanks to God for many of the same reasons. Why does the psalmist praise God? Because the Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Can you say, thank you, God? Can you? The psalmist says, the Lord doesn't deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Can you say, thank you, God? You You Honestly, if God only gave me what I deserved, I'd be in big trouble. I dearly love verses 11 through 14 of this psalm. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love toward those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far the Lord removes our transgressions from us. That's how big God's forgiveness is. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to the faithful. For God's great and amazing love, can you say, Thank you, God. The psalmist reiterates this in verse 17. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who are faithful and His righteousness to children's children. For God's love, which is from everlasting to everlasting, can you say, thank you, God. The psalmist closes with another invitation for all of creation to bow down before God in homage and gratitude. Bless the Lord, O you His angels, you mighty ones who do His bidding, obedient to His spoken word. Bless the Lord, all His hosts, His ministers that do God's will. Bless the Lord, all His works, in all places of God's dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Can you bless the Lord today? Can you bow down in humble gratitude for His incredible goodness and never-ending love? Can you say... Thank you, God. Again, I like what the New Interpreter's Bible says in its commentary on this psalm. Psalm 103 is a good place to start when talking with persons who perceive God in the Old Testament to be simply a God of wrath and judgment. We dare to profess that the ruling power of the universe is one who treats us like a loving father. And such love demands our soul our life, our all. In fact, the simple lesson of this psalm is, as one Bible scholar puts it, that God's goodness knows no boundaries. God's goodness knows no boundaries. I don't know about you, but when I think of God's incredible goodness to me, I want to bow down and I want to say, thank you, God. 
When I think of the many, many undeserved blessings that I enjoy in my life, I want to bow down and say, thank you, God. When I have to admit that my worst days are far better than the best day of millions, if not billions, of people on this planet who live in poverty or under the yoke of oppression or in fear of terror, I want to bow down and say, thank you, God. Perhaps you've seen a piece that's been circulated on the internet for some time. It's titled, I'm Thankful For. I'd like to share it with you today. I like what it says. I'm thankful for the mess to clean after a party because it means I've been surrounded by friends. I'm thankful for the taxes I pay because it means that I'm employed. I'm thankful for the clothes that fit a little too snug, and I've got a lot of those clothes because it means I have enough to eat. I'm thankful for a lawn that needs mowing, windows that need cleaning, and gutters that need fixing because it means that I have a home. I'm thankful for all the complaining I hear about our government. Do we hear that? Because it means we have freedom of speech. I'm thankful for the spot I find at the far end of the parking lot because it means I am capable of walking. I'm thankful for my huge heating bill because it means I am warm. I'm thankful for the lady behind me in church who sings off key because it means I can hear. I'm thankful for the piles of laundry and ironing because it means my loved ones are nearby. I'm thankful for weariness and aching muscles at the end of the day because it means I've been productive. I'm thankful for the alarm that goes off in the early morning because it means that I am alive. My friends, no matter how we may be feeling today, no matter what challenges we might be facing, I believe that each and every one of us would benefit greatly if we simply took the opportunity today and in the coming week to simply say thank you. Thank you to those whose lives bless us in some way, great or small. Thank you to the God who gives us life and breath and provides for us beyond measure. Thank you to the God whose love never, ever ends. A God whose compassion and mercy and forgiveness are greater than the East is from the West. Indeed, let us all bow down before God today. And say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Let us pray. We are so deeply grateful, God, for the many blessings you give us. Blessings we may often take for granted or fail to even recognize. We thank you and bless you for faith and family. For freedom and friendship. We thank you for providing for us well beyond our need. We thank you for sustaining us through the difficult and sad times of life. But most of all, God, we thank you and praise you for who you are. A God whose love is from everlasting to everlasting. A God who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, Lord, we bow down before you, and with everything we are, we bless and praise your name. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.